Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here. So Conor Ben defeats Juicy Koivula by a second round TKO. Now, despite this fight only going two rounds, it was rather exciting while it lasted. And it was a typical Conor Ben performance. We saw a hell of a lot of defensive vulnerabilities, but also we saw some good determination, aggression and finishing instincts. Like most, I don't see Conor Ben as a precocious talent. I don't really expect him to go super far in the pros, but one thing I will say, his career will be fun to watch. He will be involved in several barn burners, and that's just his style really. He's very aggressive, he's got a hot head, and defensively he is open, so yeah, he is going to make for some good fights at a certain level, so I am still interested in Conor Ben's career, it must be said. But this fight with Juicy Kaivula, it was decent. First round, I felt Kaivula looked pretty good. He tried to meet fire with fire, he tried to meet Ben in the centre of the ring, and he had success. He landed several hard right hands on Conor Ben that landed flush, and one right hand in particular actually made Conor Ben's legs dip a little bit. So you wonder what would have happened if Conor Ben was in there with a puncher. Because, you know, Kaivula was finding the target with ease in the first round. And his punches, you know, they gave Conor Ben a bit of trouble. He was never badly hurt, but, you know, he clearly felt these shots. And yeah, round one, both guys were being aggressive. Conor Ben was trying to throw his shots. You know, he was trying to swarm Kaivula. But I felt Kaivula in round one landed the more eye-catching shots. He landed the shots that you remember. In round two, Conor Ben was still aggressive, but I felt he was keeping his shape a lot better. In round two, he was a lot more compact, and he was throwing more crisp shots, and he landed a good couple of shots at the start of round two. Uh, Kaivula still had success. He found a couple of right hands on Conor Ben, but Conor Ben actually caught Kaivula with a lovely check left hook. Uh, Kaivula opened up, and Conor Ben timed him with that check left hook. Kaivula, delayed reaction, went down, and you could tell he was scrambled by that shot, but he beats the count, and he tries to fight on. He tries to meet fire with fire. He actually catches Conor Ben with a right hand as Conor Ben is opening up, but Conor Ben, his work is more crisp, his hand speed is more quick, and he manages to drop Kaivula for a second time. It was a combination that culminated in a left hook that dropped Kaivula for the second time. Kaivula once again beats the count, but you can tell he's hurt, and Conor Ben senses it, and he finishes Kaivula against the ropes with a barrage of right hands. So a two round fight, but it was certainly fun while it lasted. Again, we saw Conor Ben's defensive flaws. When he steps up, you would imagine they will be exposed. But to Conor Ben's credit, he showed some grit, he showed some determination, and he showed some good aggression. Like I said, I don't think Conor Ben is ever going to be a world champion, but he can be a fun fighter, he can be involved in some really good tear-ups, and I think that's what his career will be about, and there's nothing wrong with that. Not every fighter is going to go on to become a world champion. I don't think Conor Ben will. I don't think he will deliver on that. However, from an entertainment perspective, this guy is fun to watch. And that's ultimately how I see Conor Ben. I see him as a fun but flawed fighter, and when he's matched competitively, he's going to be involved in some really good fights. That's how I see him. I do believe some people go overboard with the criticism for Conor Ben. You know, enjoy him for what he is. Not every fighter is going to be a world champion. Not every fighter is going to be a pound for pound great. Just try to enjoy Conor Ben for what he is. And if he does somehow go on to be a world champion, then more power to him. I very much doubt it. I think at welterweight he's too small for a start, but defensively, you know, he leaves a lot to be desired and just his all round boxing skills are fairly rudimentary. So I don't expect Conor Ben to climb those heights and become a world champion, but I keep repeating myself, I'm looking forward 
to seeing his career unfold from an entertainment perspective. And I think sometimes boxing fans lose sight of that. It's not always about ABC titles and trinkets. There really is more to boxing than that. But there we go. Share your thoughts below. What did you make of Conor Ben's performance? Were you impressed? Were you concerned? Or like me, did you just enjoy it for what it was? Also on the undercard, Craig Richards, he defeated Andre Sterling. I felt the fight was close, but that fight really disappointed me. There was a lot of holding, a lot of mauling, a lot of messy work, and it really wasn't a pleasant watch. Neither one of these guys are messing with Joshua Boazzi anytime soon. If you match these guys against people like Jose Burton and people like that, yes, you're going to get some good fights, but, you know, these guys are not on the level of Joshua Boazzi. Also on the undercard, we had Ted Cheeseman, aka Sloth, versus Kieran Conway. Now, this was a great fight. I felt this fight was closer than Sky Sports made out. I felt a draw was about right, considering Kieran Conway had three weeks to prepare, I felt he did very well. He's not been at that level, he's been nowhere near that level, and yeah, I was impressed with what I saw. He can certainly come back at domestic level, but Ted Cheeseman, it doesn't look like he's improved from that Sergio Garcia defeat, and that's concerning going forwards, because next fight, he will have to defend his British title against Scott Fitzgerald, who is coming off a career best win so the momentum is with Scott Fitzgerald in that fight and stylistically you would imagine Scott Fitzgerald will have a bit too much for Ted Cheeseman. You know Cheeseman's defence again in this fight non-existent getting caught with every shot in the book and it was just another really hard fight for Ted Cheeseman more miles on the clock and I wonder where his head's at right now because he made no improvements from that Sergio Garcia defeat. Maybe his confidence is shot, maybe his personal problems are getting in the way of his development, but whatever it is, he needs to make improvements ASAP, otherwise he's getting knocked out and he's getting beat again very soon. And not only that, given how defensively open he is, this guy could get seriously hurt, if I'm being honest. You know, I was really concerned with what I saw against Kieran Conway going forwards for Ted Cheeseman. You know, I don't think that fight with Scott Fitzgerald is looking too good for him right now. But as I say, Kieran Conway, he showed glimpses of real ability. I enjoyed the way he was boxing at times. I enjoyed the way he was fighting off the ropes. And at 23 years old, he can come again. You know, he's got a lot of time and he can certainly have another go at domestic level. I wouldn't mind seeing Kieran Conway face Asinia Byfeld. I think that would be a decent fight for him, but yeah, I was relatively impressed with Kieran Conway. I will definitely keep an eye out for him in the future. There was also an American prospect on the card, Ofer Jones III. He moved to 2-0. He beat an overmatched opponent, but he looked good doing it. Offensively, he looked good. He looked aggressive. You know, he looked fairly powerful, quick, athletic. He got caught with a couple of jabs here and there. But, you know, as he goes through the levels, I'm sure he'll iron out those defects. But, yeah, Ofer Jones the third, I was quite impressed with him. I certainly like his style, so I will definitely be checking out for him in the future. And he certainly got me interested, so, yeah, he looked quite good. And last but not least, Shannon Courtney. Jesus Christ. The state of her opponent, and I know I'm not a fan of female boxing anyway, but that really shouldn't be shown on TV, that type of quality. Absolute garbage. Should not be on TV, I'm sorry if it offends anybody, but it was absolute trash. I mean, her opponent looked like she had one boxer size class in her life before she jumped in that ring. Absolutely embarrassing and appalling should not be on TV, I'm sorry, it shouldn't. I've seen chicks fight outside a kebab shop on a Saturday night who look better than her, so not good enough. But uh, yeah, rant over. All in all, for a next-gen card, it wasn't terrible. Cheeseman versus Conway was a really good fight. Ben versus Koivula was good while it lasted. And even Richards versus Sterling, the fight sucked, 
but on paper it did look like a good fight it just never really panned out but there we go yeah share your thoughts below peace